today on DC News Now. It was already a very cold day, but more cold is on the way. We'll let you know how much more those temperatures could drop. Right, he's on the wrong side of the road. And a high speed chase caught on camera. Stretching your dollar, keeping cash in your wallet as those cold temps creep in. Plus, it's Wellness Wednesday. About 39% of adults um, reported symptoms of anxiety. How you can manage anxiety. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for the news at noon. I'm Mark Hall. We're tracking a sweeping cold stretch on this DMV first warm day. Meteorologist Damon Matson joins us now. And Damon, I had a chance to make a quick dash for the car this morning because, man, it was chilly. It's a shock, right, Mark? Yeah, it really just, is. It's just crazy how fast things have changed over. Just in a matter of days, we had 80s just back on Sunday and Monday, and now that cold is truly here. It was already chilly on Halloween, but another cold front swept through the area last night and brought those temperatures down even more. There you have it across the region. DC managed to stay right at 40 degrees, but that was the exception, not the rule. We had plenty of locations staying down near that freezing mark around 32 degrees and it was even colder still in parts of western Maryland where snow came down last night just a couple of inches back toward parts of Garrett County there now temperatures at this current moment my goodness folks this is what we're talking about they have not warmed up much at all since early this morning still in the mid 40s in DC upper 30s 39 in Martinsburg and that's the effect of this secondary cold front. It is going to remain very chilly the rest of the day today and on top of that it's blustery out there this afternoon. So yes, while we will have plenty of sunshine mixed between some clouds, we're likely to stay in the 40s with that wind chill factor, making it feel like it's potentially still in the upper 30s to low 40s this afternoon. So bundle up if you're going to head out any time here today, folks, but it still is going to get colder later on tonight. Just how much more could these temperatures drop before we get to the end of the week? We'll have a full check of your forecast in just a bit. All right, Damon, thank you. Happening now, a 12 year old who was charged in connection to a carjacking attempt that resulted in the death of a 13 year old boy is in court. He's charged with attempted carjacking involving an off duty federal officer in the district. And it happened Saturday on D Street in Southeast. Officials say the 12 year old and the 13 year old approached the officer and told him to get out of the car. The officer told police that the teen Bernard Tony Jr. appeared to be armed. He says that is when he shot and killed him. The name of the 12 year old has not been released and DC News Now is in the courtroom and will bring you the latest developments. And today DC leaders announced a new way to track missing or stolen cars in the city. It's called the tracking tag program. Residents in certain police services areas be able to receive Apple tags for their cars. Acting DC Police Chief Pamela Smith says that carjackings and motor vehicle thefts and unlawful use of vehicles are up 36 percent. While our goal is to prevent carjackings and motor vehicle thefts from occurring in the first place, that is not always possible. What we do know is that swift law enforcement action to identify and arrest those individuals involved in criminal activity is important for future deterrence and also allow us to hold people accountable. DC News Now's Randy Bass will have much more coming at 4 p.m. And a heads up for ride share and mobile delivery drivers. The mayor's office of nightlife and culture is giving free dash cams to drivers in the district. The program is partially funded by a $500,000 DoorDash investment. And cameras will be given out next Tuesday and the following Tuesday at RFK Stadium. That is November 7th and the 14th. And officials say that rideshare drivers do not need to make an appointment. Well, in Northern Virginia, Loudoun County High School saw eight opioid-related overdoses in just the last few weeks. DC News Now's Liberty Zabala was at Parkview High School the sheriff's office is investigating. 
Well, Parkview High School here behind me has been rocked by these eight opioid related overdoses and deputies say some involved students found inside the high school. Now Loudoun County Sheriff's Department is investigating these overdoses right now. They say seven of the overdoses happened in just the past three weeks. Deputies say four happened inside the high school. They say three students needed to be revived with Narcan. Two students needed CPR. DC News now reached out to Loudoun County Public Schools and is waiting to hear back. Meanwhile, in Fairfax County, schools like Woodson High School back in April even trained families on how to use Narcan in case of overdoses, while Arlington Public Schools have now allowed students to carry naloxone after a student died from an overdose at Wakefield High School. One woman who didn't wish to go on camera says her friend's daughter got an email from Parkview High School alerting them of the overdoses. Drugs is never the solution that just you go deeper and deeper in whatever situation you are. And also that they have to see how drugs destroyed your life. Now here at Parkview High School, deputies say they're not releasing any names or further information regarding this investigation. For now in Loudoun County, Liberty Zavala, DC News Now. Liberty, thank you. Turning back to the district, the Bowser administration is implementing an updated sexual harassment policy. This comes after this district's investigation into former deputy mayor and chief of staff, John Falcecchio. Falcecchio is accused of sexually harassing several women. Among the changes, no sexual or intimate relationships between a supervisor and an employee. All employees must complete sexual harassment training each year instead of every other year and a new sexual harassment task force and harassment claims involving a top administration officials now go to the district's inspector general. Uh, we had uh, employees that came forward, made complaints. They were credible, they were investigated. What we've also learned uh, in these intervening months is um, that it could be strengthened and made clearer. Meantime, according to Axios, the independent investigation into Falcecchio, which is being overseen by the Inspector General, has been delayed. Well, two young children are missing, and they, have been, they may have been kidnapped by a parent, and that's according to D.C. police. And they're looking for one- and two-year-olds on your screen. Both were last seen in the 200 block of I Street in Southeast last Wednesday. Investigators say the two may have been taken by a family member, 26-year-old uh, Mecca Brown, and if you have any information, you're asked to contact D.C. police. Well, some wild video out of Loudoun County. Take a look. It shows police teaming up to chase and arrest a Leesburg man. Joseph Daniel is accused of kidnapping someone in Ashburn on Monday. Daniel led police in a chase, and investigators say that the initial Hummer he was driving was stolen. They say that they tried to carjack several cars and tried to pry the driver's doors open. Well, the carjacking attempts were unsuccessful. Daniel, who had open warrants out in Loudoun County, faces a number of charges, including carjacking and reckless driving. Police are also investigating that initial kidnapping report. Well, solutions to youth crime is a big topic right now among leaders in Montgomery County. Well, this comes after a recent uptick in school bomb threats and carjackings. I'm Michaela Newton, covers Montgomery County for us, and she explains how leaders are approaching the problem. We hear about the school to prison pipeline, and, and we need to make certain that the resources that are needed for that young person is, are there so that there is no school to prison pipeline. In a public safety meeting, Montgomery County officials discuss possible solutions to juvenile crime. Montgomery County Council member Don Lukey says behaviors like threats of mass violence create a substantial drain on public safety resources. The same kids are engaging in the same conduct multiple times and it doesn't appear that the Department of Juvenile Services is doing any intervention 
at the inception of the incident when there's been an arrest or a referral from the police department or in, you know, from the school system. Earlier this month, the Montgomery County Police Department said a 12 year old boy was responsible for multiple bomb threats targeting some Montgomery County public schools. Another incident occurred when a 17 year old student brought a gun to school and was later charged as an adult. However, according to MCPD's most recent data, there was a downward trend in juvenile arrests from 2013 to 2021. There have been 845 juvenile arrests so far this year. None of those things is new or unusual to me. They are concerning. Lutke says in terms of any changes that would affect juvenile justice, that would have to happen at the state level, and there may be legislative changes in the state's upcoming 2024 General Assembly session. Reporting for DC News Now, I'm Michaela Newton. Michaela, thank you. Meanwhile, Prince George's County Council is working to deter crime by passing new legislation. It requires surveillance cameras at apartment complexes and senior living facilities. The new bill requires the facilities to have working cameras, but some are concerned about if, it co if it's cost effectiveness. Council members say that they're willing to offer a rebate up to $5,000 to help pay for the cameras. Aside from raising rent, which is not something that we would want to do to cover this. Um, but then we also have to defer, you know, other capital dollars that we had earmarked for other projects. But we also have rent stabilization to make sure that rent does not shoot up. Well, the council would work with the Department of Permitting, Inspections and Enforcement to make sure that the camera re requirement gets enforced. Washington commanders are busy right before Tuesday's trade deadline. The team traded both of their defensive ends Montez Sweat and Chase Young. They sent Sweat to the Chicago Bears for a 2024 second round pick, and they sent Young to the San Francisco 49ers for a 2024 compensatory third round pick. The move says a lot about the direction of the team, but more importantly, the front office and the Josh Harris group, uh, the direction they're probably going in the defense this year has been near the bottom of the league, and with the two guys, the caliber of Sweat and Young still performing at a high level, Many believe that the front office wasn't going to keep these guys at the end of the year. And considering much, much that they're, how much that they're paying Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen already, it was time to get something back for them. Josh Harris and his group, they're very analytically driven. They, you know, they, they know the, the value of draft capital and draft picks versus the sentimental attachment people might have to players that have been here for a long they don't care about that they, they want to build a championship roster and if you're able to get a second round pick for montez sweat and if you're able to get similar compensation for chase young or insert commander's name in the blank they're going to do it 